Just got back from another head-to-head -head comparison where Tyler and I went out and we rode the new Yeti SB120 against the Pivot Trail 429. Man, the Pivot Trail 429's been around for a couple years. The Yeti SB120 is the new kid on the block. Go Tyler! <laughs> the first thing I want to say right out of the gate before we start comparing these bikes, I just want to talk about the whole kind of shorter travel trail bike category. And when you look at the numbers, the geometry, the wheelbase, the reach numbers, the head angles, and all these numbers that we kind of get lost in the weeds on, they're all just millimeters here and there that are different. But uh, and these bikes are, are really pretty similar on paper um, to other bikes that you guys might be comparing when you're shopping for a bike in this category. But what I want to say, this is just what stood out to me so much after riding these two bikes again this week, is what you're getting from Pivot and from Yeti out of these two bikes has nothing to do with all those numbers. It has everything to do with the DW Link suspension and the way they have it in this package on the Pivot Trail 429 and the Switch Infinity Link, the way they have it on this Yeti SB120, it's just so unique the, the way that they, they make these bikes work. And out on the trail is where it's manifest, the, the brilliance of these bikes. And I know that might sound like I'm sensationalizing it, but it's so true. Um, after all the bikes that I've ridden, once Pivot switched their shock um, to this kind of trunnion mounted style up and down like this as opposed to up here on the previous Trail 429. When they switched that, that bike just became incredible. And Switch Infinity has always pedaled so well and descended so well. Um, this SB120 is just this incredible trail bike that climbs up the mountain that's so firm it's almost like you're on a hardtail just so so efficient pedaling but then when you go downhill you almost can never bottom the thing out it just feels deep and just um supportive it's just incredible so that's just my first kind of thoughts right out of the gate i know that's kind of a lot to hear right away um I've had a lot of fun riding these bikes back to back. They're both incredible trail bikes. I think the, the Pivot Trail 429, just comparing them, feels a little softer, a little bit more supple, a little bit more like the, the rear tires track in the ground a little better on the climbs. And the Yeti also feels really good, but it feels more efficient. Like it's just kind of spinning up the hill. Um, it feels tighter and more, I hate to use the word more supportive because that feels like it has a ton of support, but it just feels more efficient just going up the hill, just pedaling up a road, for example. So which one is better climbing? I think this one will get you through chunkier terrain better than this one probably, but this feels incredibly efficient, which is really nice for those long days where um, the trail's not overly demanding. Um, probably a little bit better climber in the Pivot Trail 429. Descending downhill, this bike speaks to my soul a little bit more than the Trail 429. It kind of reminds me a little bit more of like my Ibis Ripley that I rode for years and I still think is probably the best trail bike in the 120 category for me. I just like how zippy it is. I'm also kind of small. I only weigh 145 pounds. I'm five foot eight. Usually ride size medium bikes. These are both size mediums. And so that Ibis Ripley for me just really, I could move it around a lot and it was just really um, zippy and and kind of poppy and playful. I know everyone loves the word poppy, but this bike is more like that than the Trail 429. It's a little zippier feeling. It, um, it feels like it really wants to pop out of corners more than this one, where the Trail 429 kind of feels like a bigger bike, even though it only has 120 millimeters of travel. It feels like it just wants to stay planted and really hug the ground um, coming out of a corner. I, I, think, I think this is kind of a little bit more fun for me to ride downhill. I feel like I maybe have a little bit more confidence on the Trail 429, and I'll explain why. The Pivot Trail 429 is easy to ride, and that might sound weird to hear if you've never heard that idea before, 
but the Trail 49 is just has a very neutral balance point. You can never really be in the wrong spot on that bike for some reason, and I'm not sure why, but it's always making you feel like you're a better rider than you are. You're always in the right spot. It feels kind of soft and supple all the time. It never bottoms out hard if, if you um, go off like a small drop or hit a big jump. Um, it just is, you know, makes you feel like you're a really good rider and that's fun. It can also sometimes, it's not boring, but it's not as fun or exhilarating as this bike or even the Ibis Ripley or the Specialized Stump Jumper that I recently have spent some time on. Those bikes, you feel a little bit more on the razor's edge. They feel a little bit more precise. They feel a little bit more like they're on rails in the corners a little bit more. And that's a lot of fun. So the idea that one's better than the other, you can't really look at it as good or bad or better or worse. They're just different. And you, you know what type of rider you are and what type of terrain you ride and kind of what you're looking for in a bike. So I'm just trying to explain that they are very different, even though on paper, they look so similar. Both have 66 and a half degree head tube angles. This has a 76 and a half degree seat tube angle, 75 and a half on this one, and very similar reaches on a size medium, 455 millimeters here, 460 millimeters on the Trail 429. I, I just think both of them, what, where these two stand out from anything else in the category, even from um, some of the other bikes that I really enjoy, is the suspension systems. They have incredible control and like suspension management on the downhill. No matter how bumpy or t uh, your terrain is or how kind of gnarly it starts to get, it doesn't get overwhelmed. It stays very controlled, very supportive. Doesn't feel like it's getting hung up on anything. It just kind of always uh, creates more like control and safety when you're, when you're going at high speeds. And that's what I really like about both these bikes. You can't uh, you can't go get this suspension system just on some horse link bike. It just feels different. Or uh, even like that single pivot that I rode on the stump jumper just feels different. It just doesn't have the bottom out resistance that these bikes have. And I really just love riding these bikes. You know, they're incredible. Um, I'm not sure if there's a clear winner in today's head to head comparison. Uh, I think the Pivot Trail 429 is the bike that I recommend most to people. I just think it's, it's just, it's just like, um, it's dummy proof. It's going to work for you. It's just so good. Um, both bikes are kind of expensive. That's the only thing to think about right now. Salt Cycles has told me that they're offering a special deal on the Pivot Trail 429 for MTB Yum Yum subscribers and viewers. So if you're in the market for a short travel trail bike and you've been curious about the Trail 429, now's probably as good a time as you'll ever find uh, to call Salt Cycles, talk to Chris or Courtney and ask them about the special Yum Yum deal on the Pivot Trail 429. Their number's linked down here below. Um, they're the best bike shop. They're the ones who support me and helps get, get me all these bikes to do these reviews. Um, so I'm really grateful for them and this is a way that they can kind of give back to our subscribers. Thanks for watching today. If this video was helpful, uh, hit the like button, subscribe if you're new. And if you've never been to uh, my channel before, I have a whole library of test ride and reviews that I do, head to head comparisons like this today, um, and that can kind of help point you in the right track on your search for your next bike. And if you want to support the channel, there's links below to all the stuff that I use, the helmet, the glasses, the knee pads, everything that I wear, anything that you purchase from those links, they're affiliate links and I'll be paid a small commission. That goes a long way to support what I'm doing here on YouTube. Um, thanks for watching guys. It's such a good time to be a mountain biker. There's so many just great options out there. I honestly think that these are two of the very best options in this category. And uh, yeah, hope this video is helpful for you. We'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Yeah, I mean, the Trail 429 definitely feels more supple. It's a little bit more plush. But I really like that Yeti too, a lot. The Yeti feels more, a little more playful. It kind of has a little bit more zip to it. It's starting to rain now. So Tyler, after a day of riding the
stump jumper and the 1249 and the, the Yeti SB120. Well, talk about the SB120 first of all. Okay, uh, so the 120, I'd say it feels very close to the 429. Uh, it is, I'd say the rear, like when you stand up and pedal hard, it holds it holds higher in the suspension yeah. platform and it feels it feels more efficient for sure yeah i wouldn't say it's a huge difference because they're i'd say they're close to the same weight maybe a little bit heavier on this but they pedal about the same yeah i weighed them both the the yeti is about uh three quarters of a pound more or yeah. no no sorry half pound more half a pound more okay yeah. so i mean they're not a cross-country bike it's not like you're setting crazy blistering times up up the hill but it is more efficient for sure yep um, on the downhill it both i mean they both feel incredible this 429 is definitely it's just more supple on the uphill like it takes those bumps we didn't get on really technical climbs on the 120 i have to imagine the 429 is a little bit better just on traction just yeah because it is more we're not in like super low traction you know you know terrain and I would even feel sometimes like maybe if I got too aggressive with my pedaling, I might slip out a little bit. Yeah. Where this one just always just bears down like it's crazy. It does, yeah. And so you feel that on the downhill too. Like this feels softer. It's not softer. It's still very supportive. You don't ever feel like you're hitting the bottom where this one is a little bit stiffer. It still feels great though. Like yeah. honestly, they're I would say they're very close as far as descent goes. Would you say, I, I mean, in my mind, I felt like maybe the, the the Yeti was a slightly more zippy and like kind of a little more poppy. I don't know. Did you feel that at all or not really? Yeah, I think that's just with the suspension being up in the platform. So it like, yeah, compressing and pushing into it. Yeah. You do feel like it's a little bit more, it's just like a hardtail, right? When you yeah. push into a hardtail, you're going to pop higher. Yeah. And you kind of get the same feeling with this. Um, yeah. It's nothing like the stump jumper though. The stump jumper had that same stiff feeling but it didn't have the control on the, the bottom out like That's this right. one does. Like this one, you do not feel like you're gonna bottom out. Yep. Just like the 429, you don't feel like you're gonna bottom out. Definitely both these bikes feel more control, more a little bit more confidence, I would say, yeah. sending it a little harder than, the, than that stump jumper. For sure. Interesting. Okay, I like this 120, that's fun. If you wonder why I can't keep up with Tyler, he has the KOM on Strava down that section, so nobody can keep up with him. Tyler, did you know you have the KOM on that segment? I did not know that. You do? <laughs> he didn't even know that, I looked it up yesterday. starting to rain a little bit so hopefully that lens is still still clean man it, it feels really good it, it maybe isn't quite as like hugging the ground as the pivot but it's just very it's just good these guys are always good. 